There has been a lot of news about coronavirus variants lately. Here to give us the very latest is Dr. Laura Gross with Stanford Healthcare. Thanks for being with us this morning, doctor. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Let's talk a little bit about the Delta variant now becoming the Delta Plus variant. This is the first I've heard of this. What do you know about the Delta Plus? Well, the Delta variant is right now currently in the whole world, the most concerning variant. And that's because it has mutations that allow it to be more transmissible to people. So for every person that catches the Delta variant, um, they're more likely to spread it to more people than the previous variants. Um, right now in the US, we have about four variants of concern and um, the Delta variant is, like I said, the most concerning. And now we have this Delta Plus variant, which is a variant of, it's a descendant of the Delta variant and it has another um, change on its spike protein, which is possibly gonna make it more transmissible than even the Delta variant. But at this point in time, it's not um, known to be a variant of concern because there's only a very few cases in the world. Um, However, if you look back when the Delta variant first became um, known, it was, there were only a very few cases of the Delta variant in, um, I guess it was March in the US. And now um, the Delta variant has become the most prominent variant in the US. So it's concerning that there's a new variant. Um, and so even I, more transmissible, it's obviously. more transmissible. But the thing is that all of the variants are, something that the, the vaccine can cover. So what we need to, to recognize is that if we get vaccinated, then these variants aren't gonna pass from one person to another. Um, it's just that in the US right now, we have 150 million people that aren't vaccinated. And so that's a lot of people that can fuel this variant or any variant. Um, so right now we have the possibility of getting vaccinated and, and not passing these variants, but if a variant does potentially um, come about that the vaccine won't work against, that's when we'd be in real trouble. So we have to get vaccinated, basically, as looking at these variants shows us we need to get more people vaccinated. So some people who have been vaccinated, we're hearing about these breakthrough cases, which I'm yeah. sure a lot of people are using as a reason not to get vaccinated. What, what do you know about that? How likely is that? So we have numbers now in California that show us how many people are having breakthrough cases. Um, over the past six months of the vaccinated people in California, only less than half a percentage point of those people have caught COVID, any variant, which is a really small number, meaning that the vaccines are so far very effective. Um, if you look at the, the deaths of people that have been vaccinated, only sounds like a high number, but only 62 people have died from COVID who have been vaccinated. And that's a very small number. If you look at in the past couple of days in California, there have been more deaths, even now with the low number of cases and the low number of deaths that we have, we've had more deaths in two to three days from COVID than in the whole six months of vaccinated people. So the vaccines are working, they're very effective. So the breakthrough cases are small and rare. Okay, and what do you think about this possibility of a third vaccine? We're hearing Pfizer might be coming up with one. Yeah, actually just yesterday, Pfizer announced that they are going to uh, plan to um, ask for emergency use authorization for a, a booster dose. And um, we'll see. <laughs> the FDA and the CDC have announced that they're not going to authorize anything based on just what Pfizer's asking for. They're really gonna look at all the evidence that's out there and um, decide whether or not we need a booster dose. Okay, so this is, this is gonna be farther down the line. We're talking months, if not longer. Um, at that point, I'm sure people with compromised immune systems might be concerned. Is, is three doses too much? Is, is this something that we should be worrying about ahead of time? So uh, people, with um, immune compromise, and there's like about 5% of the population is considered to be immune compromised. They may not be getting as effective, the, the vaccine, the two doses may not be as effective in people with immune compromise. So 
Some people are advocating for three doses for people who are immune compromised. And actually in France, they're doing that right now. So people um, with cancer or um, who've had a transplant or liver disease, kidney disease, or who are people who are taking medications that um, reduce your immunity, those people may benefit from a third dose. And um, actually Pfizer and Moderna are both going to be looking into that. They're gonna start studies now, but in the future, very soon, we may be giving or recommending three doses to people with immune compromise. And we actually do that with other vaccines. So there's precedent for that. The hepatitis B vaccine, the flu vaccine, we, we give extra doses of those to people who might need it. Yeah, so that's that, interesting. In okay, the future, so that, that's something that's already been going on. Yeah, it's already been going on and could be very useful for people. Okay. Anything else we should uh, we should be knowing? Any more breaking news on uh, the coronavirus or the variants, doctor? You know, um, I would just say the variants. If there's a lot of variants, it's not just the Delta or the Delta Plus or the Alpha or um, any of those variants. It's it's what's potentially to come that we're that I'm most concerned about and that I really recommend people to get vaccinated from. Yeah, and, and your recommendation basically based on the fact that people who are unvaccinated, that's where these variants are allowed to sort of fester and mm -hmm. and, and manifest themselves um, yes. rather than what, what I've heard from some people, um, you know, they're afraid that people getting vaccinated is what's causing the variants because the, the, the germs are sort of mutating to try to get around the vaccines. Is that a possibility? <laughs> that's an interesting thought. The more people that are vaccinated, the less the virus will be able to spread and the less it, the less fuel for the fire, basically, and the less fire, because there just will be less coronavirus out there when you go out. So each person that becomes infected is a chance for a variant to develop. So there'll be less chances for variants to develop and, and less sick people. Yeah. Which would be certainly good. Yeah. All right, Dr. <laughs> Laura Gross with Stanford Healthcare. Thanks for your expertise. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. So good to see you.